All right, folks, thank you for tuning in for episode 15 of Swiss Link Live TV. How's right. it going, everybody? Good. Good. We're so excited to have a repeat guest here, uh, Loki Miller. Thanks for coming in. It's my pleasure. And uh, he is an awesome musician. Uh, I mean, so many things. He'll have to tell us about it. But uh, what I'm really excited about is to tell you guys that Loki was one of the very first guests that we had when we started Swiss Link Live TV in 2015, something like that. Yeah, something yeah. along those lines. It yeah, was up in paradise. Yeah, exactly. It was a couple years before the fire, and so the fire was 18, so I know it was at least 16 or 15, 2015, somewhere around there. Young Loki, which for some reason doesn't look any different. I don't know what your secret well, is. Well, the hair is a lot longer. Yeah, the hair is a lot longer, <laughs> but somehow... He doesn't look any older there in those 10 years. Um, so we have to find out what water he's drinking. And maybe he'll share it with us. Right there. <laughs> right there. That's right. <laughs> so, Loki, you were at that time uh, playing a lot of music in, in the area here in Chico and in Paradise and all over. And then uh, I know we, we did a thing together at the theater, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. You remember you were really sick that day. You had right. a flu. Like, as lots of many people had a flu and a cold at that show. Oh, my right. gosh. Um, uh, I could hardly sing, and I messed it up for sure. I don't know about anybody else. But the, the Queen? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. That was everybody. a fun show, though. It was a really fun show, but I did the worst performance I ever did in my entire life. That was an ambitious show is what it was. Yeah. It was. <laughs> yeah. Try to copy and, Queen. Come yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, no, yeah. The, 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 for the actual performance, I remember I was uh, I took a lot of DayQuil, so I was, yeah. I was okay for the show. That's the dress good. rehearsal was, was yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a lot of people were sick. Everybody got themselves sick there for that show. But it was so it was fun. So theater, uh, musical things, and then you went off to New York City, and um, and then we kind of lost contact for a while. But what happened there? Where you went? You left here to go to New York for a while, and then you came back. And yeah. well, did you have some fun there? Would you have some? I did. Excitement I I, I got East Coast? a degree. I went to acting oh, okay. school. Awesome. Oh, okay. And uh, that was a dream come true. I had always wanted to go to an acting school, mm -hmm. and uh, so I went out there. I lived in Manhattan uh, for two years. I and I was there during the pandemic and I got uh, my degree and then I uh, moved out to Jersey mm -hmm. for a year and did that. And it was a really incredible life-changing experience. Uh, I learned a lot. Awesome. Uh, I came back. I actually was not originally planning to move uh, permanently back to California, but I got some work. I was doing some theater work in San Jose. Okay. And then I came up to Chico where I'm from for a little while after mm -hmm. that. And just being back for a few weeks and it just, you know, here is, I'm in the flow state. Mm -hmm. You know, I have plenty of gigs and work and opportunities and I have the freedom to pursue the projects that I'm interested in. Very good. That's important. Yeah. And I'm just at a place in my career where I'm much more interested in that. And uh, so, for example, now I have uh, my own nonprofit company that, right. that I started and uh, we're doing shows and mm -hmm. and I'm very happy. And I'm very, very, happy very good. That's, I, that's yeah. what's most important. What sorts of shows are you doing or what, what, what's well, the nonprofit centered around? It's a theater company where it's called Other Theater. And the idea is imagine a theater company that's designed around the experience of the artists. So it does that in two ways, one of which is a very, um, in some ways, experimental, but it's also similar to what is commonly done in uh, film or even in video games where there's a lengthy development process that goes into a project before it goes into production and uh, which I feel is really uh, valuable and, and important and also encourages the collaborators and the developers to really question what they're passionate about 
and and attract people to projects that they are authentically passionate about and and then the other way that it serves artists is by giving them ownership of the projects that they work on so we it works on a profit sharing model um so rather than uh you know, just employing the artists, they actually can uh, have a, a percentage of the profits of the work that they do. So for me, I, I, in my experience, it's kind of a revolutionary idea. But uh, for example, our big project this year is we're doing the Rocky Horror Show. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're already pretty uh, steeped in the development for that and the production team. We're still putting a couple of positions together, but I'm really excited about the team that we have going. And it's been a really fulfilling experience just to have incredible conversations with really passionate local artists who have lots of talents and skills and who are uh you know finding a, an outlet to 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 do their work in a way that is fulfilling to them too so everyone involved in the production is sort of part owner of the production itself is that yes essentially yeah that's how it works i mean there's still uh you know positions and there's a structure to the organization but the the key is that everyone at the end of the process they can see uh, how their contribution uh they're rewarded by how well the show does uh you know they have ownership they have a stake in the project that's great where do you, where are you putting on the where are you going to have the production that's going to be at the el rey theater in chico cool that's going to be like halloween weekend right yeah, that'll be perfect. Yeah. That's a fun show. I love mm -hmm. that show. It's one of my favorite uh, shows. I, I've loved it since I was a little kid. So is that is that the first one that you're putting on with this new company or is it we did, before? We did one show last year, uh, which was a one-man show that I have done about five years ago. It's about Vincent Van Gogh. And we did that over at the PV Theater, the Center for the Arts. Uh, and that was a very different show in that it's it's a one-man show and it was mostly me i essentially produced it mostly by myself uh, other than the uh lighting and sound person who was there on the the day of the show mm -hmm. um and we I have had some incredible help like with uh, my friend aaron lyon who is also a local mm -hmm. musician and a really talented fellow but he is you know he made our website and he's helping with a lot of kind of graphic design things and he's working on the show he's made already um for rocky like a little sound effect box that you know he can make all kinds of s s sounds with and right yeah that sounds like fun yeah it sure does and it's really great to have you back in town bringing the talent and bringing the shows we're all pretty excited about that and uh i was at uh, i couldn't I couldn't stay. I had an appointment, but I saw you. I see you. You play at the um, uh, Winchester Goose. Yes. Is that uh, is that a, a more permanent gig? I heard you played there more than once. No. I, well, they've been doing a, a residency mm -hmm. where, uh, like, a Tuesday night residency. Okay. So that's just for the this month, the month okay. of March. So we can I'm catch just, you there. There's one more next. One more next Tuesday. Tuesday, and that's at the Winchester Goose in Chico. A very Cool place. One of the very first shows that I did when I moved to this country in 1990 was it was uh, Cabo's at the time. It was a different different ownership, but uh, that's one of the very first shows I ever did was at that place, and it was really fun. So, but uh, speaking about that, we want to hear a tune. What you got for us? Okay. Well, this is uh, an old song. <clears throat> I know this song because of uh, Hank Williams Senior's mm -hmm. version, but. Uh, it's called Love Sick Blues. All right. Loki Miller, ladies and gentlemen. I got a feeling called the blues. Oh, Lord, since my baby said goodbye. Lord, I don't know what I'll do. All I do is sit inside. That last long day she said goodbye Well, Lord, I thought I would cry 
Well, she do me, she do you, she's got that kind of loving. Lord, I love to hear her when she called me, sweet daddy, such a beautiful dream. I hate to think it all over, I've lost my heart it seems, I've grown so used to you somehow, well I know nobody sugar daddy now, and I'm lonesome, I've got the lovesick blues. Well, I'm in love, I'm in love with a beautiful gal That's what's the matter with me I'm in love, I'm in love with a beautiful gal Yeah, she don't care about me Well, I tried and I tried to keep her satisfied But she just wouldn't stay and now that she is leaving, this is all I can say. I got a feeling called the blues, oh Lord, since my baby said goodbye. Well, I don't know what I'll do. All I do is sit inside. Lord, that last long day she said goodbye Well, Lord, I thought I would cry Well, she do me, she do you She's got that kind of loving Lord, I love to hear her when she called me a sweet day It'd be such a beautiful dream I hate to think it all over I've lost my heart it seems I've grown so used to you somehow Well I know nobody sugar daddy now and I'm lonesome I've got the lovesick blues yeah, now we're talking. That's a great song. Man, that's got some yodeling in there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Awesome. Tell us about your outfit. That looks a little uh, vintage. Well, well, since we're kind of in the vintage clothing business here, we're kind of interested in what you can tell us. This, uh, pretty cool. well, this was an outfit that came together because I was working on a show last October, mm -hmm. and which was set in like the victorian period uh, okay and so i got this for that yeah. and that was right around halloween so i wore it for halloween mm -hmm. and i got so many compliments <laughs> That's great. Uh, on it that i started wearing it on my gigs mm -hmm. and so now it, it's kind of what i'm going with at the moment though i did awesome. learn uh that this piece is called a jabot collar okay which was, you know, the fashion of like the early 19th century. All right. Awesome. It looks great. I think it's pretty exciting. Bring it back. It looks it Yeah, looks cool. I agree. It's 100%. I love it. And, uh, you know, as always, we, we uh, show a couple of items that we have. Miles, what's in this mystery box? Um, well, in this box, which is not a car, <laughs> um, is a little camping stove. Uh, it's from the Czech military, and it's got a little cooker inside of it. Wow, that's talk about is, vintage. Uh, pretty awesome. So I'm not exactly sure how it works, but I think you can just sort of set this guy up. Oh yeah. Or maybe I've got it the other way. Maybe this is a. Maybe those are feet. I don't remember. Yeah, probably like that. So you can put the you can put the pot on top. Get a little burner. Mm-hmm. Right here, just like that. Exactly. So this is your fuel canister. Yeah. And you've got these uh, to put your pot on. Mm -hmm. Little pot holders. Just like I that. love it. Your little cooker. That's you cool. Know? You put, your pot, this, but you put yeah. your pot. on there. Put your pot on there, and you got your your uh, cook mm -hmm. um, denatured alcohol in there. I would imagine that's what you would put in there. Yeah. In the burner, and it has a little hole where the flames come out. 
so it concentrates the flames and makes it that's really awesome very clever man i hope we got a bunch of those i i remember you and me looking at that when we were over there in europe and going through some old warehouse and saw these um they're finally coming up and uh you can find them of course at swisslink.com yeah cool they'll stuff. be they'll be up uh shortly uh they're not not available yet but they're coming so yeah, this is just a little preview. Had the box alone. I know that's that's what really won me over is this box. Yeah, super cool. <clears throat> See that, and this is from the Cold War era, uh, where the Czech Republic uh, was still Czechoslovakia. Mm. And what happened is that Czechoslovakia was one country. They uh, at one point decided to uh, split after the whole you know Iron Curtain fell and all that. They decided they would uh, split. And they're uh, Slovakia and the Czech Republic now. Mm. But what they had is before that, when they were Czechoslovakia, they had a whole bunch of stuff that they amassed during the Cold War time to be ready for whatever, like a lot of people did then. So um, over the years, over the last 30 years, I've been buying up everything I can from them that they have mm. left over from the Czechoslovakian time mm. because when they split up they each wanted to have their own gear they didn't want to share the old gear anymore so there's slovakian gear czech republic gear but there was all this whole pile of czechoslovakian gear yeah. that they were selling yeah. so you know i'm not buying their tanks and airplanes and guns i just go <laughs> like this kind of stuff and so is this actually from that it's era or yeah is this a it's from, no it's from oh, that wow. era mm -hmm. this is uh, from the cold war times and that was what they issued to their, what they were going to issue to their soldiers if they had to go out in the field. Yeah, that's a really cool. Or it also, I got a feeling that this might have even come from their uh, hospital lab because that was mixed in with a lot of gear. They had these big field hospitals mm. and sometimes they would have to, you know, warm up things to in their labs. And I think this might, that's why this box, it looks, because this box looks more like it comes out of a medical uh, box, uh, but you can use it for anything you want to cook, of course. But I think uh, it might have been from the laboratory because of this wooden box. If it was a field unit one, they would have a soft case mm, mm -hmm. where the soldier would carry it. I think this came out of a lab. That's very cool. So, yeah, there was... Like a little Bunsen burner. Basically. Yeah, like a, a Bunsen, burner. Bunsen burner. Exactly. That's what it is. And there was millions of items. They just went crazy. You know, they just stocked yeah. up, made stuff. And, and uh, so we, we sell it. You know, they're wool socks. They make great socks and wool and pants and shirts and... So we are basically a repurposing place here that takes all this stuff, uh, brings it over here, we sort through it, size it, and then send it to the different vintage stores, surplus stores all across the country. That is great. And that's what we do. And sometimes we come across some really cool stuff. And <clears throat> during that time, we also got all of their water cans and gas cans, and we pretty much went through them all. So we decided to make some high quality copies of all that stuff so that we still can have high quality and good prices. And that's how we kind of ended up with this stainless water can. Now the cool thing about stainless, I love stainless, my watch stainless. Mm. I just love stainless. It's a great look. Uh, people like it to have it on their boats or on their yachts. Let's say yachts. That sounds better, huh? <laughs> or their paddle boats, whatever, you know, or, you know, use it for their overlander trucks. It looks kind of cool. It's really serious quality. It's, potable water of course since it's stainless you can fill it with olive oil um use it for olive oil mm -hmm. it's uh, the 304 stainless steel so it's what they use for all the canteens and things like that yeah so it, it is a, a potable and I, I love the, the way that how you know the quality of the uh, you can just feel it you know the lid it's a really nice quality it has a little spout if oh, you want to cool. pour your olive oil it has even a little filter if you want to pour your olive oil in your big salad, <laughs> you can use this. Yeah, I don't know who needs 20 liters of olive oil. But, you know. You'd be surprised, you know, some of yeah. these restaurants and places, you know, they go through a lot of olive oil, especially if it's good stuff. Um, <laughs> but of course, water is the main purpose for it. Um, anyway, it's a really cool can, and you can find it at twistlink.com, of course. Um, gosh, you know, so... Back to the music, um, I've been doing some shows around here too. It seems like the you were saying earlier that all the friends that you came back to and all the different musicians out here and the gigs and uh, availability. I've it's an amazing place, Chico, when it comes to the music scene. Uh, so many musicians coming out of here that are so great, and and it's it's kind of 
I know that it was the university that maybe in the old days started that whole mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. to, to have so many students, you know, and they have great music programs here in Chico at the Chico State University. They have recording programs at Butte College. So it's really fostered here a lot. Then, of course, there's uh, been, you know, my son uh, used to play music when, uh, it's about time you do that again, by the way. Yeah, we'll um, see. At different venues when he was not 21 yet, they, they fostered mm -hmm. that. They had a, uh, different places where, where where young people could play music and mm -hmm. and uh, it's just a great place to be and I agree uh, you know I moved here 30 years ago just to hang for a little while mm -hmm. and uh, man you know every time I travel and go somewhere I'm so glad to come back here yeah you know besides the music and besides the uh, the climate we have here it's just incredible you know a little hot in the summer but you know what the heck we have rivers and creeks to jump into so right. So that's a pretty awesome place. I'm glad you're back in Chico. And uh, folks, if you haven't seen Loki Miller show, you just got a sample of it here. Uh, you have to go check them out. And where can they find? Do you have a web page, a Facebook page, or or anything like that where they could see and find and get your schedules and all that? Yeah, what I use is just Facebook and Instagram, mm -hmm. and you can find me Loki Miller, L-O-K-I Miller, uh, and my Instagram is just Loki Miller Guy. Okay. G U I. Um, and I post all of my gigs and good. my projects and things like that on Very good. on those platforms. You will be highly entertained, folks, I tell you. So please catch one of Loki Miller's shows and uh you'll do another song for us to, to for our to. outro here. Sure. That'd be awesome. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Her money out the Southern Trust Put a little boy aboard a Greyhound bus Leaving Louisiana for the Golden West Down came a tent from a happiness Her own little son named Johnny B. Good Was gonna make some motion pictures out in Hollywood Hollin' bye, 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 bye I said bye, 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 bye Bye-bye, Johnny. Goodbye, Johnny. Be good. Well, she finally got the letter she was dreaming of when Johnny wrote and told her he had fell in love. Soon as he was married, he would bring her back. Build a big mansion by the railroad track. Every time they heard that locomotive roar, they were standing waiting in the kitchen door, hollering, bye. Johnny, be good. Yeah, rocking there, rocking it out. You really got, um, I love your guitar playing. It's pretty awesome. Thank you. I said, Something I always been admired is uh, somebody that can sit and get the rhythm and keep it going so well and still sing along with it. I'm, a, I'm pretty bad at that. I have no, so that's you. pretty awesome. It's great. It's an Epiphone you're playing there. I always yep. like to tell this people what instrument we're looking at. My uh, and it's an Epiphone mm -hmm. uh, E uh, A J. And this was the I got this guitar for Christmas when I was ten years old. Oh, you're wow! This Excuse has me. been on that's so many yeah. gigs, and this is you know mm -hmm. this thing's seen a lot of a lot of playing. That's but, awesome. It sounds great. You sound great. We're so glad that you came by today, Loki. It's my pleasure. Um, Thank you. If there's anything else uh, that you have any questions there, Moz, we're all good with episode 15. I'm just, I'm just looking forward to uh, catching that Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, in, for in sure. It'll be fun. I'm old enough to remember when that Rocky Horror Picture Show started when I was in my younger times, and it's just amazing that it's still alive. Right. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, my friends used to, we used to go to the movie theater, I and mean, when it came out first, and then we'd go again. And next thing you know, they'd go again, and then they would be playing along with the movies. Like it was, it, I, I kind of bowed out at that point. Some of my friends went fifty times, right? And they would be in character there at the show, and they would say lines. I mean, it was insane. And 
You know, it's incredible. A lot of people that I've talked to have a similar experience mm -hmm. with it when it first came out, yeah. like that they were part of that. And, right. and it is now it's, it's been so long and it's still so present and, yeah. it, and it's really Amazing. become kind of an important cultural, um, moment you yeah, know, as a so, show yeah. and and it is it's something that you know it it represents more than just a, a b movie right you know it's it's a certain uh there's a a, a a what is the word for there's an inclusiveness there's a safety there's a playfulness there's something about rocky horror that brings people together yeah it sure does because it really did i mean it was amazing well, it's uh, not often you get the audience involved at such a level like that. Exactly. Know? It was unbelievable. You Dressed go, up and throwing things. Yeah. I mean, people set. went to the movie theaters for that. Right. There was people that went to see, never heard or know anything about the Rocky Horror Picture Show, but they heard about all the stuff going on at the theater. That, you know, and, and that's what I went there for. It's like it was show in a show. It, it, was, it was insane. There's really nothing <laughs> else quite like it. No, there isn't. Uh, Tommy was in, uh, you know, it, it, that it, with the Who, you know, that movie, mm -hmm. it became a little bit like that, not quite, but uh, it never reached what Rocky Horror Picture did. But in those days, uh, that stuff that came out there, it was Jesus Christ Superstar, mm -hmm. Tommy, Rocky Horror Picture Show, it was all at about the same time. And they all had a pretty big, in, me at least, influenced me a lot. I'll never forget, I was, you know, awestruck mm -hmm. by the, for Jesus Christ Superstar, I was awestruck by the singer. Totally, yeah. I mean, when he sang up there on that mountain, that song. Right, I, right. I, I don't even know how, how you can explain goosebumps anymore, but my, I mean, my skin was falling off. <laughs> it was, yeah. it was, I was so goosebumpy. That vocal talent for, was, was his singer for Deep Purple last time? I'm, or not, I'm not sure, yeah, but I Ian, remember that Ian scene. Ian Gillen yeah. or something. I mean, like, there's, there was some impressional stuff, and, and then uh, what was the other one? Uh, uh, Aqua, you know... Um, Aquarius. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That was another one at the time. The that hair. Was the hair, yeah. and that was also at the same time. So mm. all during mm. that time, there was some mm. pretty exciting stuff going on when it came to those kind of shows and musicals. But Rocky Horror Picture Show really took the took the uh, the, the prize there. Well, and it's interesting because when it first came out, uh, it flopped. <clears throat> like in it's in it when it with with its actual like major release, mm -hmm. it was a total flop. No one <laughs> went to see it, I didn't and it was just that. yeah. There was an up and coming executive mm -hmm. at the at Fox who personally called some of the theaters that mm -hmm. there was this new trend of the midnight movies, mm -hmm. and he said, "What do you have to lose? Just you know, put it on at midnight," uh -huh. and and that was the beginning of this uh. scene. You know, slowly people started mm -hmm. playing with yeah. the movie interesting and it became a whole new life it of sure thing. became it was pretty wild it was exciting there was a lot of things exciting you know of course i was young and those, those days are exciting anyway but but <laughs> there was a lot of cool stuff that happened yeah i hope that stuff's happening now too for the young people cool I stuff but for you to bring it back and and introduce the people that's awesome that's pretty exciting so i'm i'm definitely coming to Thank your you. show so i'm looking forward to it and also, you don't wear fishnets for that. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> also, <it>. I uh, <laughs> remember I was you invited me to one of your shows a long time ago before, like in fourteen. What was that? I'm trying. Oh, it was. Uh, you did a show, the Raven? the Raven. That was awesome too. That was fun. Thank you. Yeah, that was a fun time. So you can't. You got to keep an eye on this man. He's going places. Loki Miller is is a true entertainer. He understands and loves art and lives it and performs it. And we're so glad you're back in town. Thank you. Uh, thanks for being here and thanks for tuning in to episode 15. We'll see you all next week.